Well, uh, an eventful couple days. Kimberley, South Africa. Kimberley, South Africa. You can find it on a map. And uh, Kimberley is where South African history changed. Uh, you'll find on Google Maps, if you find it, there's this very conspicuous place in the middle of the map called the Big Hole. And that is where some of these Afrikaner types found some diamonds. They found some diamonds. And there was a big deal about whether to leave them there forever or try to dig them out themselves and like sneak them out into the world to make some money or to try to cash in more conventionally. And um, it was a big deal because they knew that the English would show up in the form of a Cecil Rhodes. You've heard of him, haven't you? Yes, in the form of uh, Cecil showing up. And, uh, and that's exactly what he did. And uh, that, that really commenced the, uh, the English invasion, if you will, of uh, not, just, not just trading uh, Cape Town, but also uh, where I've been, right? But also up in the interior as well. Uh, they even have a, a war memorial there to the, uh, the English who perished in the Boer War of 1900, or one of the Boer Wars anyway. And it's pretty wild um, to see that. Because, of course, uh, most people, there's just as much Afrikaans speaking as English speaking going on right here in town. And, uh, but, you know, everything's called St. Mary's and Rhodes Avenue and everything is all very Englishy, like in the street names and stuff. And there's all this, uh, and frankly, around the campus of the Northern Cape Technical College, which is mostly about mining, man, they've got all this uh, Masonic stuff going on, ancient Greek stuff. It's all, yeah, you betcha. Anyway, I, I, you're not obligated to find this interesting, but uh, I got here at one. And that's when the bus stops. I almost, I freaked out because I had actually slept through one of the stops. But it turns out there were multiple stops in Kimberley. And the one that I wanted was the last one. Actually, not the one that I thought I was going to use. Because the one that's further outside of town is at the giant truck stop. Which has lights and picnic tables and people around. Which means there's a couple crackheads trying to, trying to verbally predate you. But uh, also, it means that there's people, and light, and food, and a bathroom, and a place to politely wait for, or as I figure out my taxi situation and wait to be picked up. And that's what happened. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And, uh, <laughs> you, and then the, uh, the guest house that will not be named here, that I had arranged on Agoda, we get there. So there I am, Mr. Taxi Driver, thank you. Meter's running already at like 15 bucks. And uh, this is South Africa, you see. Dangerous at night. And so you don't just walk in to talk to somebody, not, not, not in a small place, like that you, that you choose to try to save a buck. Ha, ha, ha. So I, I went in there. And uh, so, I went to, so there's, there's, a, there's an electric gate, and then there's a sign with a number on it. And you call the number and they let you in. Fine. And uh, I'd use the Agoda site. And I've been very particular about what time to be there. But I was going to be there and did everything honestly. And uh, the man on the phone, he says, you don't, have a, you don't have a reservation. No, you don't. And I don't appreciate being called so late. I don't know if he had even heard of Agoda. So I, I, I'm crying and I'm laughing and I'm furious all at once because like, Oh my gosh, is this really happening? So I, uh, <laughs> I call again, he hangs up. Great. I get back in the taxi. I say, well, you know what now? Shit, I don't know. But there, we had passed by a hotel. A more like a very official fancy place where I sit right now. 
and uh, about to about to shove off of here to a nice Airbnb, which has a so much better interface. And so, yeah. By the way, winter hotels just gonna stop being hotels and just be a bunch of Airbnbs in a building. That's why I want to know when's that gonna happen. Anyway, I uh, <laughs> we come in here and oh, they have a gate and security, which means we can get in. Can you dig it? Security actually is an expense, but it also is a way to extend a hand to the outside world. There's this very interesting dichotomy to that, right? So I, I can actually get in. We talk to the man. He says, well, it's going to cost you 150 bucks a night. Ah, oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. He says, well, hang on a second. He sees my sad face. I guess you can see I'm not being a, too, too difficult. He gives me a discount. Thank you very much. And he also says, well, you know, it's 3 a.m., so, you know, it's already tomorrow, so, you know, I could just sell you one night, right? Which would be not tonight, but also tomorrow night, so you get to sleep twice and have one day in between. I'm like, sold, buddy. And so here I am. And this is, uh, th this place is actually right next to the big hole monument place. I can, I can drink my coffee and just walk out and look right at it next to the swimming pool. And they have all these pictures that I'll slideshow in here. All these pictures everywhere of this just gigantic operation of people digging up these diamonds, man, with like ropes and buckets and, uh, and axes. And you, it's just amazing. You look at the size of that hole and then you look at, uh, the technology used, and it, it just blows me away. Uh, the labor, which was not just English, you know what I'm saying, but also just the organization of how do you put this together. Like, you know, you and me, I'm used to minds being gigantic machines with some invisible people inside the machines somewhere that don't even show up in the pictures, right? That's what a mine is. You look at a mine today, it's... It's a tinker toy set with, with machines and earth. Whereas these mines, these mine pictures are hundreds of people in all of these crazy mechanical details that are uh, obliterated today in just the mass scale that we work in. It's really something. And it's hot out there. And these people were tough. That's all I'm saying. Uh, boy, oh boy. So I just wanted to tell that story. You know, it's about as put out and vulnerable as I have felt in a long time. That 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 moment of 2.30 in the morning standing outside on the street in a strange city. Uh, some eight dangerous at night. Strange city uh, with nowhere to go. Even though it only lasted an hour and I had a taxi and I had money in my pocket to pay him and we could figure it out. That moment of, oh my God, what am I going to do? Really just, uh, you can't get to, this is, it's funny, this is making me flexible. It's making me humble. It's making all these things, but there's no way to get to humility and flexibility without pain, right? Like, how do you become flexible as a person? You stretch, you stretch your body and it always hurts, right? And I'm going through that and there's going to be more. I know it. I, I also... I've also had this, sorry, this is not a super well-formed thought, but I've been thinking about how, think, Craig, think, words, words, words. I think a lot of flexibility, as I'm discovering, is like learning to, conf to be confronted by my own mistakes, my own expensive mistakes, and uh, the things I should have known better, but I didn't, should have known better, but I didn't right? And not just wanting to give up and declare myself a failure, but to keep muscling on. I mean, I'm lucky to be able to at least have enough money that I can absorb some of these. There are plenty, most people in this world don't have any, any slop cash at all to deal with even one or two mistakes. But for me, it's this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not being physically tested. I'm not, you know, I'm not 40 days in the desert or anything, but it's the, 
it's this never it's this constant you're unpredictable but you know it's coming peck peck pecking of uh the humiliation of having not been as smart and not planned as well and not having thought of things for me anyway that really hurts because i'm trying to get i'm still trying to get straight a's out here and i'm, I'm figuring it out that craig you can't get straight a's out here <laughs> you know what i mean i hope that makes sense so anyway about to uh i'm, I'm ravishly drinking up all the provided coffee and rooibos and uh, tea here Oh, and by the way, even though this was like like the classical, the first fancy Victorian hotel, uh, now I'm the only white person here, and that's fun. I've had some fun conversations with the staff. I've had some fun times with the waiters who were very curious to ask me about what I think about Trump and America and all that. And it's really the people out here, and I, I'm talking mostly about the, the colored and black people that I talk to, it's like... You just got to jump in and talk. You just got to jump in. Like Arguments aren't so much... How do I say this? I, I, I don't want to... How do I say this without getting in trouble with the people who don't understand what I'm talking about? It's... It, it, it's a real test. Like Americans actually... We're not John Wayne anymore. Americans have the reputation of being really weak speakers and really wiffly waffly, Right? And I was trying to hedge everything. And what I found is that, like, no matter what people think of, like, me or where I come from, if I just, like, jump right in and say, I love this and I love that and here's why I think that's great, it's on. The conversation is on and we have a good time. It's a real, uh, it's, it's, it's not so much about let's, let's, let, let's rhetorically, uh, no, let, let's, what's the word, what's the word? Let's, let's come to the truth using logic and da, 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 da. but rather it's like it's a cojones tester. Every conversation, every meeting is a cojones test of you know, am I confident? Do I believe in what I believe in? And it shakes out the things that like if, if I'm saying things, if I'm representing a position with these folks that I don't really believe in, they smell it on me right away, whether it's like correct or not. You know what I mean? So it's a it's a wonderful it's wonderful to have an opportunity to roll around and wrestle around in that chakra. I hope that makes some sense. I'm really trying to self censor here because you know where, where I am and uh, there, there's a whole lot of self censorship going on here. Oh yeah, I went to church yesterday. I went to church. Always go to church when you're traveling. Always go to church. We have Google Maps now. We have SIM cards. You can find a place. Just go to church because. You're the novelty. You're weird. Wear your flag pin. Like let, let let everyone know you're you're strange. Let everyone know you come from far away. And man, people are gonna come up and talk to you. And there's this, there's this nice fella who uh, who came and talked to me, and he ended up inviting me. And I kind of invited myself in a little way. I'm learning how to how to angle the fish. <laughs> but I went to his family home, and his in-laws were there, and his wife, and the kids, and and we had a big barbecue, and I had. Are you ready for this? Warthog sausage. Sausages made from warthogs. Yes. Along with delicious potatoes and uh, mushroom gravy and everything. And we had a really fun time. Really fun time. And if I really play my cards right, I might get to go out tomorrow with him to visit his solar-powered beekeeping operation. You see, you can't predict this stuff. This stuff isn't in Lonely Planet. No, it's not. So anyway, that's wonderful, and I wish me luck I get to go tomorrow. I got about what, oh shoot, I got like 45 minutes to get myself out of here, check out, call up the taxis, shift over again. Uh, uh, uh. I'm getting a little bit better at this. It's kind of like bench pressing, you know. Unpack the stuff, repack the stuff, blah, 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 blah. I, you know, throw off the stuff you don't need anymore, all that kind of stuff. It, it's, it's a good time. It's, it's good. So through hardship, through humiliation, through little, little failures, I'm becoming a little more flexible and a little more, a little more trusting that things can work out as long as I'm good to everyone and stick up for myself. Two pedals on the bike. All right, I'll see you guys later. One more thing is... Um, 
quick thought I don't want to miss again. I don't want to lose again. It's uh, it's remarkable how much I was able to uh, turn turn this uh, this little this little phase of the trip around uh, when I had 24 hours here at the hotel of you know air conditioning and all the filtered water I can drink and nice nice restaurant food and um, a door I can lock keep my stuff in and uh, my own bathroom and all kind of stuff it's uh and of course working internet so I can get on get all my whatsapps and all my emails and all my www's together and it it, it really amazed me how how just 24 hours later I was in uh, so much so much better shape uh, both like in real life and also in terms of my under, you know my, my understanding of my plans and ability to carry on like we have all of the, the electronic tools pretty much everywhere now but just uh, that little bit of well frankly comfort and security for the body and possessions even for a short time was really really helpful I, I remember after the first big car chase and the born identity which is you know something super daring I'll never do but uh, after the big chase he says uh, our hero says to the love interest who gets you know entrained up in his his crazy world you know he says uh, okay we can't come back to this car. We need a hotel. I need to think. And I totally get that. I totally get that now. And, you know, and of course, uh, you know, the, the goody-goody in me it wants to ask questions like, I've always wondered if, if there could be like a, like a little baby office hotel kind of a business, even for the middle of the day, for people who have homes to sleep in, but just need a, uh, a room, you know, with a chair and a couch and a desk and a and a place to plug in their computer and quiet and AC and maybe maybe a clean water tap to drink from, you know? Like I really do wonder if that's a kind of real estate that's waiting to happen. I keep going back to it. Okay, anyway. I think that's it. So yeah, anyway, it's helped me understand a little bit better what business hotels are really in uh, and that is getting a little bit of physical bodily security and comfort and predictability into people's lives so they can figure out what the hell they're doing next okay bye for now